Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about DC shunt motor. In this example I will discuss another problem where we have a series resistor in the field winding to adjust the motor shaft speed and this is our example number eight. So let's look at our problem. We have a DC shunt motor with a terminal voltage of 350 volts. The armature resistance is 800 milli ohms and the field resistance is given as 9 ohms. The rotational power loss is 2 kilowatts at the specific speed of the shaft and we have also the load, the demand by the load is a torque of 260 newton meters. It must be independent of the shaft speed. In addition, that is the series resistance uh, where we're talking about, which is then Rx is 26 ohms. What we want is the shaft speed specifically for this condition where the required torque by the load is demanding here is given. Okay, let's look at our solutions. Again, we start with the model. In this case, we have a DC shunt motor and that is this model. What you see is again the armature part and also the field. But in addition, we have the RX, which is here shown here as the variable resistor. But in this case, it's just 26 ohms. Terminal voltage here and we have also the terminal current which will be applied here. And this is the mechanical load where you see the load torque. What we're talking about is 260 newton meters. This is then the rotational speed actually, the direction of the rotation. And this is then the output torque actually of this system. And you have always in the motor con convention that the output torque is always in the opposite direction to the load torque. So the developed torque by the back EMF of course of the total system will of course a little bit larger, must be of course a little bit larger because you have a loss in this case or rotational losses. That will be discussed shortly. In addition, what we have is this magnetization curve. You can see the field current and also the back EMF voltage. So, and that's for specific rotation speed. And we need this to determine some parameters. Okay, let's look at our problem. And we start with the speed given, which is then here, the R RPM in 1200 RPMs, the speed for this magnetization curve. Now let's start with the field. The field is given by this expression using the Kirchhoff voltage law. We know this terminal voltage will be then across these three elements. And again, we lose this part of this uh, equation because the DC, at DC, the reactance of this inductor will be zero. So we have actually the simplified version and we have again our field current expression here. And that can be, of course, calculated by using the RF and also the RX. And we have now 10 amperes given using the information here. Now we can use our magnetization plot here. You can say at 10 amperes, we have a associated back EMF volts of 280 volts. So this point is for us are necessary to carry out the calculation. So from the plot we can say for 10 amperes we have a back EMF for this first condition of 280 volts. You can also say what is then the associated armature current. You can also do that in a simple form as the field. Again set up the Kirchhoff voltage flow here for this branch. This voltage will be then across this element and this element plus the back EMF of course. Again this will be just gone because it is DC so you just have actually a short effectively for the inductance so we have actually only the voltage across the terminal minus the back EMF voltage for specific this uh, rotation speed divided by the armature resistance and if you now substitute the values for 0.8 here 350 and also the 280 volts here you will get this current. Why do I show this current? Because this current is only for this specific case and not for the actual case for our low torque. Okay, important parameters, the motor constant, that is actually what we now calculate. The back EMF and also the rotation speed will give you the back EM, the motor constant that is actually related in this fashion. Now we can now, of course, first determine the shaft speed in radius per second in another unit because we have given in RPM. 
So I do 2 pi over 60 times given shaft speed. We have then the actual shaft speed in our radius per second it will be then 125.7 radius per second. Now I have now the necessary information to calculate the back, the motor constant. Then I can do the following, collect them together and then I have 2.228 vapors. That is our motor constant. It will of course stay the same also in the next situation where we have a new shaft speed. Okay, the new situation. What we want is of course the develop uh, required torque. For that we first need to write down our equation for the developed torque. Developed torque is the load torque plus the losses. So we have some uh, losses due to friction, also due to rotational etc. Uh, action. So in this case we ha only have given that the rotational loss is given. So we assume that there are no other losses. So we can say the load and also the loss of the uh, of the system will be then actually the loss due to the rotation and that is related to the power dissipated or power lost by this rotation divided by the specific frequency fre specific rotation speed now we have now of course this and it is now 2000 given already and this specific uh, rotation speed is given here and we can now calculate what the torque is now this is now the torque we have now and now we can use this to calculate the developed torque. So for that we can then take, take them together. Now you will have 275.9 newton meters required developed torque. Okay, we can now use this formula to calculate the required armature current for this case. Because the developed torque is also equal to the motor constant times the armature current. Now we can now calculate the armature current, which is just developed torque divided by the motor constant. We have the necessary information. We have now 123.8 amperes. Okay, let's now look at the armature branch again and again set up the equation. This is of course the equation we have. Again, we lose this because the noctance will be zero for DC. And we have now again set up the equation using 350 volts for our terminal voltage. This is the back EMF. We need to calculate for a new situation. We have the new situation uh, armature current and also the 0.8 already given in the example. The back EMF now calculated for this condition is 251 volts. Okay, I can again use this similar formula which relates the shaft speed to the back EMF voltage. So the, again this expression, but now we're using a new shaft speed, which is of course the required shaft speed for this load torque. Okay, if I now rewrite this, I can then calculate the shaft speed just using the values here 251 over the motor constant. We already calculated that and that will give you 112.6 radians per second. All right, this was our example number eight where we have discussed the, what we have as a shaft speed for a required load torque of 260 newton meters. If you have any questions about this exercise, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. And don't forget to like and share this video so that we can reach more people. Thank you for your cooperation and see you next time in another interesting video.